Hey everyone, I'm going to have a quick look here at a couple of boards that were sent here by a, uh, a really nice kid. Um, this is a previous repair attempt. Um, he sent me two iPhone 6 Plus boards and um, he had sent these in to a company on eBay that turned around and said, sorry, we can't fix either one of them. So anyways, I just wanted to show what my initial findings are here on this first board. Um, I don't know, you probably can't see that too well on that camera that's right by the board. I'm going to switch over to the microscope camera and show you what it is that I'm looking at. Um, the uh, connector here for the, uh, for the home button. You see how it's slightly off from its pads? And then if we look really closely, if we flip this around and look at the other side of that connector, I think you'll be able to see if I can get it just right, I know I can see it really clear under the big microscope. Um, it's really gummy with flux. There's sort of um, a flux all over it. I don't think this little microscope is going to show show exactly what it is that I'm seeing. Um, but the two anchor points there in the screen, you'll see that one of them's got kind of a big blob on it. This connector has obviously had to be reworked. I don't know if they replaced it or just resoldered it, but what happened here is they got it way too hot. And from getting it too hot, um, they actually floated this connector on the other side of the board. So um, that's part of my initial findings. And then let's go ahead. I'm going to flip this board over here and peel the sticker off the back and have a look at it. This is somebody that's clearly used a customer's board for honing their skills. Which, you know, it's always a learning experience. You always have to, to learn and, and, and really learn on the fly. But when it comes to this job and how much heat... Oh my God. And how much heat you're going to put on the board. Um, you really should practice on something that's not a customer's device. This board has had a lot of heat on it. Let's see if my USB microscope will show you. So this isn't going to be a, a Touch IC replacement video. This is going to be a what you get when you send your device into an eBay company video. They have just left a ton of flux all over everything. This whole board, look, all around the PMIC. Like, why is there flux all the way over here? What were these people doing? Now you can tell by the resistors here, I'll try to center that one or the capacitor or whatever it is right there in the middle of the screen. See how we got the um, solder blob there on the end of it. It's hard to see on a lot of this other stuff, but there's another one. This stuff has been gotten really hot. Look at the heat markings on that inductor. So um, anyways, I'm not sure what I'm going to find. I have no idea what I'm going to find underneath these ICs. Uh, my hopes is that maybe they just tried to reflow them um, because I'm worried if they did all of this shit to the board, how many pads am I going to have left under these ICs? So um, before I get started, though, I have to put this board into a test housing and check and see what it's doing. So I really don't know what the extent of the damage here is. Uh, I'm going to call this a botched repair rescue because somebody really did a nasty job on this. Um, the little microscope I just showed you all that really just doesn't do it justice. Like, why would there be rework flux across this whole thing? My goodness, what did they do? I'm going to try to give this kid some good news. I got this board and then one other one. He sent me two of them. So he sends two into a company. The company sends them both back and says, sorry, couldn't fix either one of them. Hmm. Okay. So I'm working on an iPhone 6 Plus board here that was sent here by a kid that had sent him in to a eBay seller that's doing this on eBay, probably for some ridiculously low rate. Um, I just did a little short clip and showed what the fingerprint scanner on this board looked like and said that I'm not going to do a, a repair video on this, but uh, I have to. I mean, seriously, I have to. Look at, look at this, okay? I'm going to switch over to my little USB microscope and see if I can show you what I'm just, I'm floored by. And let me get right in, see if I can get a good look at this Mason I see on this. Um, you're not Mason, you're... 
too hard to recognize. Okay. Can you see what it is that I'm looking at? Let me try another angle. Let's shoot it from over here. And focus right here on the edge of this. You see what I'm looking at? If not, you move again. Let's get this this side of Mason. Do you see what I'm looking at? Let's have a look over the top of Mason. And let's look at the side of that audio I see. You see the balls underneath that big audio I see? Me too. There are no balls under that Mason I see. It is flat on the board, people. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe they just got frustrated <laughs> and decided this is a no fix and just dropped that sucker on there. Or maybe they tore so many pads. Maybe they tore so many pads that they were just knew it was never going to work again. So they took the same old IC and just put it back on there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do this on video. I'm going to pull the Mason IC off of here. And see what this looks like. I think it's going to be really nasty underneath. I'll, I'll be surprised if this is salvageable. There are so many things that I see wrong with this. And this company, uh, you know, I didn't ask this customer if they still had to pay for the repair or, or what happened. Hopefully they weren't charged because this is really nasty. Really, really bad. There's so much flux on this board, I kind of hate to even add any more flux. Get my manual focus bar selected. Now I just plugged this in and tested it, and this is before doing anything at all, and my finding was no touch. None. Not limited touch, not like a gray bar or anything, just hold. Flat out no touch. Oh my god, look at all the missing. Jackasses. It's not going to be a fun one. There's where I'm at. It's not too bad. I mean, I can fix this. You know what? I'll clean it up first and then show you what that looks like. Let's go ahead and clean the pads. Boy, there, there is no, there's no balls under cumulus IC either. So, we're going to go ahead and pull it. I might as well just dip this fucking board in flux.
Be right with you. Okay. It actually looks pretty good here under cumulus as far as pads go. I don't have any missing pads. Uh, I actually have two missing pads on Mason though. I don't really care to do more than one jumper on these ICs. I'm pretty sure one of my missing pads on Mason pretty sure the missing pad on Mason is one of them's ground and the other one is my common jumper. It's I don't even have to clean these pads, they're all... There's not... I mean... There's not any solder on them. Normally you got a bunch of leftover stuff on them. That's not the case on this board. Now if I get any traces... Any pads missing here in the middle of this chip? I'm gonna no fix this puppy quicker than you can blink because I got too much going on to deal with that. Okay. Let me show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so here's the site for the Mason I see. You see that top corner there where we have two missing pads. And then here's site for cumulus IC. It actually looks pretty good. You know, I'm pretty sure the issue with this phone and why they didn't fix it is right there in the center of my screen. Those two missing pads. Um, I'm going to get a 6 plus opened up here on the schematic and hopefully my ZXW tool don't crash, which, you know, it probably will. But yeah, I'm not going to retin these pads. These all, you know, they had the more I screw around trying to trying to clean this more problems we're gonna have okay that corner one I'm pretty sure is ground it's kinda hard to tell through all my flux though so let's have a look at it anyway of course CXW tool crashed Why are we lagging so much? Gonna have to upgrade my computer if I keep doing these videos. Okay. Let's just get in here and have a look at that IC. Corner pad. It is ground. We're okay there. This one be seen. Okay. So this one I'm gonna have to deal with. This is important. That's my common jumper. I, if I'm going to be doing a uh, pad repair on an iPhone 6 Plus, that's the one that's getting it. The ground pad at the end, I'm probably going to go ahead and 
stick a wire out there on it. I'm going to look at the IC itself first and see if I can get away with not connecting that one. Boy, there is a lot of nasty shit on this board. I'm going to go ahead and sit Mason back on the board. I mean, Cumulus. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah, I was getting ready to dump an IC out of my strip. And as always, upside down. And then we're going to inspect the bottom of it. No chips in your chips. Sometimes it happens. This board has enough flux on it to manufacture all of the iPhone 7s for the next year. STS, this is Jason. May I help you? Okay. Let's set this on the board. Wait. It's going to drop. I'm going to give it a little nudge. Not yet. A little nudge. Make sure it's not back. There we go. That was way too much heat on cumulus, but I need it to drop. We are nice and flat. And we are now raised up. Would you like to be in my video? Red handle. Okay, now we're going to work on this micro jumper. Actually, 
micro jumper stopped a long time ago. This is a nano jumper. I'm exposing the trace with my dull exacto blade. Gotta get some new blades, this sucks. Okay. We have bare copper. We are definitely not doing this with this iron. This is the wire I'm using. Now, we're going to tin the little bit of copper that I exposed. Just like that. Here's where I'm at. Time for lunch. We want it to be long enough to give us some surface tension against this trace. so that when it all melts, the jumper will stay in place. Cut this off. Zoom in to make a cut. Pull our excess wire out of the way. There it is. I hate it when I lose the excess wire. Okay, 
Here's where we were at on this micro jumper. Nano jumper. Pretty sure micro is a lot, a lot bigger. All right. There's the jumper I just put in place. Maybe I can get a different angle on it and you can see it a little better. Yeah, that's a pretty good angle there. As far as being able to see what I did. Okay, so we have a jumper. Now, are we too close to the ground ball there? Let's go straight from the top. Absolutely not. Well, I'm going to look with the big microscope. It looks like my jumper could catch the ball on that ground corner. Maybe see if I can nudge it. Just a fuzz. Out of it. It's still too long. Go. I'm going to grab one of these ICs and have a look at the bottom of it and see if we can skip that ground pad. Okay, that will be bottom right corner closest to me. Can't skip it. Jumper.
Okay. Tonight? Yeah. yeah. Okay, brown ball is a little big. Alright, that is what I have done. Okay, we're going to inspect the new Mason IC and make sure there are no chips on our chip. It looks really good. 
Oh, it's for orientation, right? It's gonna sit on the board like that. Okay, it's in flux. Hi. Love you. Love you, love you. Check out our micro jumper area, the nano jumper area. Actually, looks really promising. What it looks like. Test housing.
Yay! Yeah? yeah Let me finish my video. video. Fresh baby. Okay, so there is a difference between a super bargain deal eBay retailer that says they're going to do this for you for 40 bucks and a shop that actually does the right job. Um, this phone is not going to have any issues with the touch screen. I don't know if you can even see it on that camera, but take my word for it. The touch screen on this phone is working awesome. And what had happened whenever they went to do these ICs, it looks to me like after they pulled the Mason IC, they noticed those, um, those missing traces and they panicked and put the chips back on this phone and told that kid, sorry, we can't fix it. So really all they had to do was run some micro jumpers and, uh, well, I don't, at this level, I wouldn't even call it micro. I think that's more like a nano jumper. It's so small that my magnet wire here, I don't even know what gauge it is, is way too big. The only wire that I found that's small enough is like wire out of an iPhone 3GS speaker. I use that a lot. Um, and I use wire out of vibrator motors. So um, there's still some stuff here on this phone that I have to check. I have to make sure we have working proximity sensor, ambient light sensor, and um, cameras. But... Um, I don't know if you can see or not. Let's try again. Just the right angle. This phone has a perfectly working touch screen. And we can type. There's not going to be any issues here because I know that every pin is connected really well. Um, I take my time on these jumpers and I make sure they stick and pull where they should be. Although this one did make me a little nervous. So um, that's it. This is a botched repair rescue on iPhone 6 Plus Touch IC failure. Um, this kid's going to be happy. I'm getting ready to give him the good news. I got one fixed, and I don't know if I'll get to that other one today, but I'm going to try really hard. I got, um, let's see, I got five of these left to do now. This was one out of my six. So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day.